All right, so we're gonna move on now to making an occupied bed, which is our next skill for today. And uh, to learn this, we're actually gonna learn a new principle, and that's right here, linen rules. This is the last principle that we have to learn. Up until now, we've learned all the others. We know our opening, we know the skill rules, we know when to wear gloves, we know um, washing rules, basin cleaning procedures, we know scoot and roll and privacy blanket. We learned about shoe rules, that we need to have shoes on patients when they're walking, and we've learned the closing. So we know all of the principles up until this one, and this is linen rules. And along the way, I've actually told you some of the um, components of this principle. We learned when we learned about barriers not to hold uh, supplies up against our uniform because your uniform is not considered clean once you start working. So you don't want to hold anything clean up against the uniform. We also learned when we talked about privacy blanket not to snap a, uh, a sheet or a blanket because you don't want to bring any pathogens that are on the surface of the bed up and aerosolize them right at the, the level of your nose and mouth. So we've learned that. But there's a couple other things that we need to touch on here. And one of those is that in a clinical setting, we don't have dirty linen hampers in each patient's room in most settings. We don't like to keep dirty stuff in the room. So some facilities will have hampers in the hallway. And it's, it's like a big wire um, stand on wheels with a lid. And in this stand goes a bag. Usually they're a light blue bag, probably about the same color as that washing rules banner. It's a light blue bag. It'll actually be stamped with spoiled linen on it. And sometimes those are out in the hallway for you to put dirty things into. But some facilities don't keep them in the hallway either. They actually have a separate room called a soiled utility room, and anything that's dirty would go into that room because we like to keep all of our dirty stuff confined in one space, and it just reduces the risk of cross-contamination. So in, um, in a clinical facility, you may have a hamper in the hallway, but most of the time, you're probably going to be taking the linens to a separate room. We also have a clean utility room where all clean stuff is kept, and that's where a lot of your supplies will be. Sometimes there's a linen cart in the hallway with clean supplies. But anywhere you go, no matter where you work, you're going to have to go through an orientation period. And usually it's a couple of days. They're going to talk to you. The first day is usually about where to park, where to eat, how to clock in, who your supervisor is and all that. Then they will put you with somebody that actually works on the unit and they'll show you around and show you how things are done at that facility. Remember, Always go back and read those policies and procedures so you know directly what the employer is requesting of you. So take the time to read those policies and procedures, but during orientation, this stuff will be reviewed with you. So you know that you're not gonna have dirty linen in the room, and that poses a problem. Well, if you're gonna take dirty sheets off of the bed and you don't have a hamper to put them in in the room, what, what do you do with them? because you can't just throw them on the floor. Remember, those sheets have pathogens. Anytime a patient's laying in bed, we shed things like skin cells and sweat and bacteria. And you don't wanna put those sheets on the floor where all of those uh, potential cells can contaminate the floor because you're gonna walk on that floor and you're gonna go in and out of all kinds of patients' room and even worse, at the end of the day, those shoes go home with you. So we don't wanna just throw sheets, dirty sheets directly on the floor, so what do you do? Well, in a clinical setting, the best thing to do, hands down, the very best thing to do, and what most of the policies and procedures are gonna tell you to do is to go get one of those soiled linen bags. So they're usually in the soiled utility room. You'll go in, you'll get one of the blue bags, you take it to the room with you, you open it up, and then all of the dirty things go directly into that bag. If you don't have a bag available, if it's an emergency situation, you gotta change the sheets quickly because there was a problem, don't throw those on the floor, go get a chucks. Put a chucks on the floor, put the sheets on the chucks. That's acceptable as well. What's not acceptable is putting dirty items directly on the floor. That will fail you on the state exam. 
So, and I know we do it at home, right? And that's where the danger is because this is something that, you know, you change your sheets at home probably on a weekly basis or maybe a little bit longer, but you change the sheets at home. And what do you do when you strip the bed? Well, we pull the sheets off, we throw them on the floor, and then we put new sheets on. But you can't do that in a clinical setting. It will fail you on the state exam. So if you're if you've got a, uh, in a clinical setting, if you've got a bag to put them in, that's the best option. If not, use the chucks on the floor. Um, but for the test, they're going to make this super easy on you. They're, they're, they're going to cut all of that away and make it so easy for the test. In the, the clinical room, and I'm going to turn this camera around so you can see. So over here is our clinical setting. And I know I've got tables in the way right now, but over here is our clinical setting. And you'll see that we have a privacy curtain, we've got a bed, and then we've got this um, shelf that has all of our patient use items on it. It's gonna have sheets, towels, washcloths, privacy blankets, patient gowns, chucks, patient clothing, everything that we need to take care of the patient. And on the bottom shelf of that supply cabinet is usually a dirty linen basket for the state exam. Now, some evaluators may pull that basket out and put it at the end of the bed, and that's fine too. Doesn't matter where it is, they're gonna show you when uh, you go in to take the test. Remember, they give you that orientation at the testing unit. They show you this is where you're gonna find your supplies. These are the hospital beds, this is how they work. This is what we use for privacy uh, during the test. So they're gonna show you around how to work everything and, and where to find everything. So in some cases, the evaluators will actually have this basket out at the end of the bed if the, the space is big enough that you're not gonna trip over it. But when you start this skill, that's the one thing that you've gotta look around to see is where is the basket or the dirty linen container. Um, because you're gonna put the linens directly in that dirty linen container no matter where it is. So for the tests are gonna make it easy. There will be a basket or a container of some sort. You'll just put the linens right in it. In a clinical setting, do not put the linens directly on the floor. Put them in a dirty linen bag or at least on a chucks if you're gonna put them on the floor, never directly on the floor. You might actually see that as a written question on the state exam as well, so keep that in mind. So for this skill, um, let me pull up, let me do this real quick here. I'm gonna pull up the uh, care plan. Okay, so if you look at this care plan, it tells us to change the top sheet, bottom sheet, and pillowcase while the resident remains in bed. So now this is important. This care plan tells us to change top sheet, bottom sheet, and pillowcase. It then goes on to say, just so there's no confusion at all, it then goes on to say that a bedspread, blanket, draw sheet, or under pad is not required. So this is one of those situations where more is not better. Remember, we always follow the care plan. The care plan, the whole care plan, and nothing but the care plan. So for this skill, all you're gonna do is change the bottom sheet, top sheet, and pillowcase, that's it. They make this super easy on us, super easy. Now it also says the resident can roll as directed but cannot get out of bed. So we can ask our patient to scoot toward us, roll away, we, we just make sure the patient's always in the middle of the bed, but they can roll. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to physically turn the patient. They can do that on their own. So this is not, um, not a very hard skill. It is a, a little bit longer skill. You'll see down here that it uh, is expected to take you, remember somebody with no experience, about 14 minutes to get this done. And it will be done on a live person, a, another testing student. Of course, the patient's in bed because our care plan up here says the patient will remain in bed during this skill. All right, so let me stop that real quick. So any questions on that so far? Nope, okay. All right, um, I'll go ahead and put your hand down. Okay, so for this skill, um, it's gonna be a live person in bed. You're just changing the sheets. It's super easy. But do you think privacy is important? Yes. Okay, so anytime the patient is uncovered or undressed, what do we need? 
privacy blanket. Privacy blanket, that's right. So we're gonna put this blanket on and then we'll take the sheet off the bed under the blanket. And that blanket's gonna keep the patient covered while we do this skill. At the end of the skill, we'll take the blanket away and the patient will be covered with the sheet. So don't forget that, that um, the patient really needs to be kind of covered during this as well with a privacy blanket. When we're talking about making an occupied bed, you should wear gloves if, let's go over the three rules real quick, if you're going to touch anything ooey-gooey that's not yours, mm -hmm. if you're going to touch non-intact skin, so mm -hmm. rashes, wounds, sores, that type of thing, and if you're going to touch any personal Body skin, fluid. normally covered by a, a bathing suit. So, um, <laughs> let me go here. So, when you're uh, changing sheets, there's a possibility that you might come into contact with body fluids because, you know, sometimes when people are in bed, um, they may not get up out of bed in time. There may be little accidents or, you know, I mean, things can happen. So, yeah, there is a possibility that there might be some body fluids on those sheets. So, in a clinical setting, 90% of the time you probably will wear gloves for making an occupied bed just because there's the element of the unknown. We're not sure. So we'll wear gloves, but for the test. So let's go to the test real quick for the test. This is a live person fully clothed. Remember they're wearing clothing to test. So they are fully clothed. They're not leaking anything and they've only been in the bed for two minutes before we change the sheets. Mm -hmm. So for the test, gloves are not required. Now you can wear them if you want to, but they're not required. But let me tell you a little secret. This skill is actually easier to do without gloves. Because as you're rolling the sheets, we're gonna get to that in a minute, but as you're rolling the sheets, those gloves can tend to get caught up in the roll. And uh, it makes it just a little, it, it makes it a little bit more challenging. So the test is actually giving you kind of a, a cheat. It's going to make it easier on you by not requiring gloves for this skill. You can wear them if you want to. It's easier to do the skill without them. If you want to wear gloves, that's fine, but you're not required to. It's not a graded checkpoint. So does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. All right. So for this skill, our linen rules are, of course, you don't hold any linens up against you. Your uniform is not clean. The linens are. Oh, let me turn around here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to turn around so you can see this, um, the linen rules. Um, you have to have clean hands to get your clean linens. Well, it's just like any other supply. So you won't get your linens until after you've done your opening, closed the curtain, washed your hands, and gotten a barrier. So remember that you have to have clean hands to get the clean linen. We don't snap or shake the linen. We don't want to aerosolize any uh, pathogens. Now the next one, though, is the one that counts. Clean rolls toward me, dirty rolls away. And you actually heard me say that, I believe it was last Wednesday. Clean rolls toward me, dirty rolls away. So when we're, when we're changing the sheets on a bed, we are gonna roll the dirty sheet toward the patient and tuck it up under them all along the length of their body. And then we're gonna put the new sheet on, roll that one toward us. Clean rolls toward me, dirty rolls away. So we're gonna, uh, roll that clean sheet toward us and then tuck it under the dirty. Patient will go back on their back. We're going to go to the other side of the bed and just repeat the process. So when you're making an occupied bed, all you're doing is making it a half at a time. So we're going to have the patient on their side. We're going to change this half of the bed. Go to the other side, have the patient on their side. We'll change that half of the bed. And then we'll put the top sheet on make hospital corners, and change the pillowcase out. So not a whole lot to do with this as long as you remember those rules. Um, remember that uh, dirty sheets never go on the floor. You don't want the clean sheet to touch the floor either. That's just kind of an infection control principle. That's where uh, hospital corners come in, and I'll, I'll show you how to make a good hospital corner. And unused linens must be discarded. And we talked about this last week. If you don't use it, you have to lose it. 
Um, remember that if something is out of your sight, we cannot consider it clean because we don't know if somebody came along and uh, cleaned up spilled coffee with that washcloth or that sheet and didn't know where to put it because there's no dirty linen hamper in the room. So those are our linen rules. You already know most of them, but some of them are a little bit new to you. This is not, like I said, not a hard skill. This is actually my favorite skill. If I got to pick a skill for the test, this would be the one that I would want because it's kind of like a Houdini trick, right? So the patient's in bed, you're going to change the sheets around them and they don't even have to get out of bed and they have clean sheets. But that's a little bit complex, right? Changing sheets with somebody in the bed takes me a little bit of time to do. Um, it's about 14 minutes is what the state says it's going to take you to do. So it takes a little bit of time. It's way quicker for me to change sheets if nobody's in the bed, way quicker. So anytime the patient is out of bed, if they are at an appointment, if they are at a meal, if they are in the shower room, if they are in activities, if you've got a bed bound patient and they are out of bed for some reason, that is a prime time to make that bed to change those sheets. So anytime you walk past an empty bed, you should automatically think, wait, do those sheets need to be changed? Because it takes you a quarter of the time to change an unoccupied bed as it does to change an occupied one. So anytime you have an immobile patient, somebody that's bed bound, somebody that doesn't get out of bed, anytime they're out of bed for something, change the sheets. It'll save you a ton of work and a ton of time a little bit later on. So kind of keep that principle in the back of your mind. If the bed is empty, does it need to be changed? This particular patient, this care plan says the patient has to remain in bed and we need to change the sheets. So we're going to use this technique to do it. Remember your patient can roll as directed for the test. In a clinical setting, if they can't roll on their own, we're going to use that same uh, technique we used for sideline position, arm up, arm over, knee bent, knee angled. If you use that, you can turn a patient very easily onto their side. But if you're going to turn them, always scoot them towards you first so that after the turn, they're in the middle. But the test makes it easy. You can just ask the patient, scoot toward me and roll away. All right, so any questions before I show you the video? Any questions on this?